Hello everybody, so I came home today and I read an article on The Guardian which was disturbing and by The Guardian standards that is very 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 disturbing. So it's called, Daughter Would Still Be Alive If CPS Had Not Pursued Charge of False Rape Claim. You probably know where I'm going with this. As inquest opens, father says there was no reason to prosecute Elena de Freitas who killed herself days before the trial. The father of a young woman who killed herself after being put on trial for making up a false rape allegation said she would still be alive today if the Crown Prosecution Service had not pursued her. Elena de Freitas, 23, took her own life in April three days before she was set to face trial on the charge of perverting the course of justice. In notes left for her family, she described her overwhelming fear of giving evidence as a motive for taking her life. The case against her was initiated by her alleged attacker, who spent hundreds of thousands of pounds on a private prosecution. The CPS took over the case and prosecuted de Freitas despite being told by police that there was no evidence that she had lied, and in the knowledge that she was suffering from a psychiatric illness. David DeFritis, the woman's father, said on Friday, we can see no reason whatsoever why the CPS pursued Elena. If the CPS had put a stop to it at the time, I would still have a daughter. She would not be dead. It is as clear as that. An inquest into the death of DeFritis, an A-level grade student who had bipolar disorder, is due to open in London on Friday afternoon. Lawyers for the family are calling on the coroner to postpone the hearing in order to carry out a wider inquiry in front of a jury to examine whether the CPS decision to pro prosecute was a contributing factor to her death. Her father said, Elena was a very vulnerable woman diagnosed with bipolar who made a complaint of rape as a result of which she herself became the subject of legal proceedings. This was despite the fact that the police did not believe there to be a case against her. There are very serious implications for the reporting of rape cases if victims fear that they themselves may end up the subjects of a prosecution if their evidence is in any way inconsistent. It is of the utmost importance that the CPS consider very carefully whether the, such cases are in the public's interest. De Freitas' death has echoed the case of Frances Andrade, who killed herself after being accused of lying in court about the abuse she suffered at the hands of Michael Brewer, the former director of music at Cheltenham School in Manchester. Victim Support and Justice for Women have both written up to the Director of Public Prosecutions, Alison Saunders, expressing their concerns at the wider implications of the DeFritis case for rape complainants com coming forward in the future if alleged rapists are able to use the law to intimidate them. In a statement, Saunders said she was concerned about the case and was investigating it personally. I have asked the team which dealt with the case for a full explanation which addresses all of DeFritis' family concerns. I appreciate the family's on these, which is why I'm looking at this personally in order to satisfy myself of the details surrounding all the stages of the case. She added that she would welcome the opportunity then to meet her family and said the circumstances regarding the case were rare, extremely difficult and always complex and sensitive. This case was one of the most difficult I have ever seen. De Freitas reported to police on the 4th of January 2013 that she had been drugged and raped by a male associate shortly before Christmas in 2012. The police investigated the case, interviewed De Freitas and arrested the alleged perpetrator, but the police eventually told De Freitas that they could not proceed further as there was no realistic chance of a successful conviction, partly because she had reported the alleged rape sometime after the event and as such no forensic evidence had been collected to support her claims. The alleged perpetrator was told that there would be no further action and that the case was closed. De Freitas's father said, his daughter had, been accept had accepted the police's decision and tried to get on with her life, but the man at the centre of the rape claim began a private prosecution against her, saying she had lied about the rape. Some months later, lawyers for the CPS announced that they were taking over the case against the Freitas. A trial for, for, for preventing the course of justice was due to open on the 7th of April. She had died on the 4th of April. On Friday, Harriet Wistrich of Bernberg Pierce and partners acting on behalf of DeFritis' family were calling the West London coroner to widen the inquest to consider whether the Crown Prosecution Service breached Article 2 of the Human Rights Act, the right to life, by failing to abide by its own code and consider whether there was a public interest in prosecuting DeFritis before going ahead with the prosecution. Deborah Coles, co-director of the charity inquest, said the case raises serious issues of concern regarding the prosecution of rape complainants. In addition, Elena had severe mental illnesses which do not appear to have been taken into account by the prosecution service. There, was, there must be robust scrutiny at the inquest to explore how these issues of public interest impacted on her life. 
Adam Pemberton, Assistant Chief Executive of the Charity Victim Support, said the tragic and troubling case raised broader concerns about the use of private prosecutions against rape complainants. We are concerned in principle about someone who has been accused of rape being able to bring a private prosecution against a complainant because this allows the individual to use the law to do something guaranteed to intimidate the accuser, he said. Well, sorry for the speed. Um, if it was too fast for you, it's in the low bar, so you can read it yourself. Now, I believe that people are innocent until proven guilty. So, as far as I'm concerned, this woman was innocent because she was not found guilty. And yes, perhaps the CPS did make a mistake in this case. Although, at £200,000, I... You know, you don't spend two hundred thousand pounds unless either you're ex you're obscenely rich, or you really believe in this cause. Uh, but regardless, why is this man prosecuting this woman, the bad guy, for wanting to clear his name? I mean, if a man commits suicide before a rape trial, does his family get a meeting with the director of public prosecutions? It's disturbing how public interest uh, can take precedent over justice. Um, you know, victim support and superiority for women, I mean, justice for women, um, lobbying the director, it, it, it's a complete disgrace to rule of law, and, uh, you know, it's finding how they can justify the disablement of a man's right not to be slandered with another right, such as Article 2 of the Human Rights Act, the right to uh, life. Uh, I don't know how, what, how that works, I'm not sure how that works, but... Anyway, it just shows how easily and willingly men will give up their own rights if it is to protect women in some way. And I don't like the path we're going with changing of definitions of rape to mean a woman um, being an adult child when she is slightly tipsy. You know, if a man is charged with rapes with rape and he kills himself, the responsibility, the response for it would be the complete opposite of this. He would be, he would be presumed guilty. Like I said, though, it's possible that she was the victim in all of this, but regardless, I don't like the consequences of this. I don't like what's on the horizon from this. It's, it's infuriating. It makes me very, very worried for the future.